At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce like zesty oranges and crisp carrots reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. If you're looking to move out of your parents' place, you could really cut expenses by bundling your car and renter's insurance with Progressive, which is good because your little brother has gotten really territorial. You're blood related. You'd think it would be fine to share food in the fridge. I mean, who writes their name on every individually wrapped slice of cheese, Tyler? Still, you've got to admire the commitment. So bundle your renters and car insurance with Progressive and use the savings to help you move out and have all the cheese you want. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. Impact of Influence, the Murdoch family murders. This is the unfolding story of a powerful South Carolina family, the mysterious deaths they are linked to, and our quest to bring you the truth. Hello, friend. Matt Harris, Seton Tucker, and we're grateful you're here. You can reach out to us, Matt Harris Podcast at gmail.com or the Murdoch Podcast Facebook page or MurdochPodcast.com. We want to start with some questions that have come in and questions we have for our legal analyst. He's been on both sides of murder trials, both as a prosecutor and as a defense attorney. He is John Snyder. Uh, John, let me start with this email. Is it normal to lose so many jurors over the course of a trial this long? So they're down to to two or three. Uh, two alternate. alternates. Okay, yeah. Is that normal and a long? Have you ever had a case this long, you John? Yeah, I've had a case this long. Typically, uh, their, their attrition rate's a little bit higher than normal. You, you have more more people, you know, having this issue and that issue. So I'm not. It it, it is beyond normal, but it's you know it's happening. So you you just hope for the best, and you hope that they all make it to being in panel to deliberate. I had a question for you about closing arguments. Are these fluid? Do, do you have these already written out or are they kind of making adjustments as this case goes on? They are making adjustments as the case goes on, but most likely both of these, both sides of this case probably have already written their closing when they were writing their opening. And so what Waters' job is to do, or whoever is arguing at the close for the state, they're going to go back and make sure they click every, every box on the checklist to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did it. And I think um, they argue last, so, so there'll be a little bit of adjustment in their argument based on what the defense argues in their closing. Something that came up from the Harputlian side, he asked the judge if they could split closing arguments. If Harputlian could do some and Griffin could do some. I was, I, I've never seen it split. I don't know if that's normal. If it's not normal, Judge Newman said that he doubted he would allow it, but he'd think about it. And, and the other part of that question is, why wouldn't you be allowed? Talk to me about how that goes about. So, so typically you get each side gets to, they kind of lock in. So if I'm examining you, one of the other lawyers can't start asking questions once I've started. And so the same thing applies to, the arg- to arguments, where if you gave the opening, you can also give the closing. But if another lawyer is going to give the closing, you don't get to also do part of it. I, and I actually think that's gr- I think that's the right decision by the judge, because you don't want <laughs> you. I mean, you could theoretically have two defense lawyers arguing on behalf of the same client, separate argue, like different theories of the case. And so that would that would be could create error in the conviction. So I, I, I think the judge is wise to deny that motion. Who's going to be doing the closing argument for the defense? Any predictions? I think I think Griffin, uh, I think. You know, you're going to want somebody that can connect to those 12 people that are actually going to be sitting deciding this case. And so you want somebody that's got complete and total grasp of the facts 
and you want somebody that can just bring it home. It's going to be long, probably. And I think that's why, Harp- I, honestly, I, I think Harpootlian's age came into play on, do, I, does, do we want him up there for two plus hours? Well, they said that they actually, that was the question they asked the judge at the end of the day on Friday was whether it would, whether they were going to limit the time that each side had to give closing arguments. And Judge Newman said, nope, take as long as you want. So that's going to be a strategic move, in my opinion, about how long are you going to keep these jurors' attention? Do you have an opinion on this, John? My my opinion is that the state will probably use it. The, the, theirs will be much longer than the defense's, and it will it will be, you know, this has to be the best presentation Waters has ever given in his career. Um, but he also, and he's going to have to walk everybody through you know, weeks upon weeks of testimony. And I think he'll do that in a systematic way that that does not lose the jury. Another question, uh, uh, email. This is from Simone. Uh, Behind the scenes information, all right? So uh, she says, how do they decide which attorney examining which witness? Does the responsible attorney do all the prep work for the witnesses they will question? And she says, and I also see what I may be off base, but it appears... Some attorneys, both state and defense, are much more skilled than others in questioning witnesses. Uh, so I'm wondering why the less skilled attorneys are getting so much game time. What, what, any thoughts on all those questions? Well, I think you, you alternate and, and you, you know, a case of this magnitude, a case with this many witnesses and the forensic part, the technological part with the with the cell phone tower and the and those records. There's, it would be impossible for one lawyer to do it all. So you just, you just have to divide it up. And then, yeah, some people are just way better at it than others. And that, that comes across when you're watching a trial. I had another question uh, from Matt Harris podcast, gmail.com. Why are uh, neither side bringing up some sort of forensic psychologist or a person who can speak to mindset? I think I know the answer, but go ahead, John. I think one, we're not all the way done, right. so that could still happen. And two, it may just open the door. And and on the defense side, if they call them, Waters is going to try to drive a bus through their testimony to, to just show them how silly it is. And so it may just be a calculated risk to leave it sort of undefined, so that you can define it through your closing argument. A lot of the TV shows are putting on body language experts. I think it's a bunch of tarot cards and, you know, silliness, but they do it all the time. But yet you don't see them on the stand. Could you talk to anything you know about the credibility of, of body language experts? I, I think I think there's, it, you know, it's a soft science. It, it's not it's not a definitive way to understand what's going on. One, two, in law school, part of your curriculum, at least at my law school, was we learn about changing our body language so that you know, so that you're not giving tells in your testimony, and you pass that along to your to your client. Oh. So, so you know, so so it may be an effective way to gauge things, but but at this level of legal advocacy, I don't think it's a good way to determine guilt or innocence all right there he goes john snyder just real quick uh like a grade that you're are both sides even steven as far as how well they're doing their job do you any thoughts I, 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 you're you're watching ali frazier you got some of the best <laughs> people in, in in the game in south carolina going at it and the judge has done a very good job of letting them try their case, but not letting them get out of control. And so we're going to see, you know, whatever the result is, I think we could be confident in it. Progressive presents Adjusting to the Suburbs. You just bought a home in the suburbs, but no one told you about all the birds, specifically this one, who seems to be calling out Roy. Roy. But who exactly is Roy? 
And why doesn't he ever respond? Maybe Roy is just bird speak for save with Progressive by bundling your home and auto. I guess until Roy answers, we'll never know. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers. At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce like zesty oranges and crisp carrots reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. The temperature in the courtroom, is that something that the judge decides, the court, is it ever discussed? Because I'm thinking that there are probably advantages and disadvantages to having different people, different temperatures for different people on the stand. Is it ever any part of the strategy? Uh, it's it's the, the person that has complete and total control over that is the judge. Okay. And so the judge gets to decide what's comfortable or uncomfortable. I am sure that both sides of this case have discussed their their opinions of the temperature and the judge has decided to keep it where he's kept it i never even thought about it till i saw the thermo the, the thermostat right behind the heads i'm like i bet there's a talk from attorneys what they like but, i've uh, thought about it because yeah, it, it is very <laughs> chilly <laughs> and this is a facebook message hello i'm a listener since the beginning and a charlatan who remembers when matt and ramona premiered in the queen city For those who don't know matt and ramona show morning show on Mix 1079 in Charlotte. Um, I have a question for John Snyder. I've heard many lawyers tell their clients not to show emotion on the stand or in the courtroom. But then there are always talking heads that criticize the witness or defendant for not showing emotion. I am sure that there is a fine line between not enough emotion and too much emotion. An example would be Buster, who did not seem to show much emotion on the stand recently. But I can also imagine that maybe he was told not to show much emotion by an attorney. Can you explain your thought process as an attorney? John? Absolutely. What you see out of a witness is many times, especially in a case like this, is it's, you have spent time with your counsel going over testimony. I always believe that the best thing to do with a client is to especially non-lawyer clients. So, you know, so your, your standard person who's never testified before, your best instruction to them is get up, be yourself, be honest, and don't lose your temper. And so you'll, you'll see, um, especially when, especially when it's a defendant who's testifying that's when those talking heads kind of come in and say, oh, they didn't show enough emotion or they showed too much emotion. And, you know, again, the jury's deciding whether the testimony they're giving is accurate and true, but they need to be testifying probably in a controlled manner. You know, Buster is up there and he's, you know, imagine the situation he's in. His brother that he loved, his mother that he loved are both murdered. And the dad that he loved is the one accusing, uh, you know, accused of the murder. So I don't know what the appropriate register of emotion is other than to just try to push through it and just shut down your emotional response and, and answer the questions that are asked. of you. John Snyder. Thank you, man. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, Bye Johnny. All right, let's talk about the Netflix special that came out. Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting take to come at it from the victims of the boating accident. I have not finished it. I honest. still have one to listen I have to. One to, yeah. Yeah, so I've listened to the first two. But what I thought was really interesting, because so many people have talked about the boating accident being the catalyst of all these financial crimes coming to light. Yes, he, and, and well, I will say this, the part where Alec is talking about how vile social media was toward Paul, I have no doubt about that being true. No, I <laughs> saw it myself. I actually was at a USC game and speaking to the people in front of me when Paul was back at USC and it, I, 
there there definitely was a lot of negative reaction and we heard that Maggie didn't want to stay in Hampton itself because mm-hmm. of the reaction she received in the aftermath of the betting accident. So I, I actually believe that that was true. And, and what's also is where I think the defense might go a little bit is the next day after the murders, or maybe it was two days, John Marvin and Randy, his brothers, were on, I believe, Good Morning America, and they talked about the threats that Paul received, remember? And then then Sled eventually went to Paul's USC uh, apartment and got his computer, I believe. But what the defense might say is, all these threats, nobody uh, on any organization, SLED, college, and whoever, dove into those and did any investigation. Well, we haven't heard anything. And I actually got a question from a listener about whether SLED investigated Mm -hmm. these supposed threats. I don't know if they're real or not, but we have not heard any testimony about it at all. And that's why I think the defense might go down that path in closing or, or, or something like, look, they didn't even look at these threats, which would have been credible. Now, I'm not saying they are or aren't, but I think that's yeah, how we, you present it. Yeah, we don't know. And Alec did a great job in the one question where he talked about how whoever shot Paw Paw had hate in their heart. Seemed a little contrived, maybe a little um, rehearsed. I've received a couple of questions about this hate in my heart thing. About whether, again, that was rehearsed or whether Alec was talking about himself with this hate in their oh. heart. I mean, I don't know. It's up for the jury. It's up to the jury to decide. Right. Well, what he did point in their head is, right, this is a incredibly violent, awful murder scene. And it's going to be the defense's whole, one of their major points is going to be, do you really believe Alec, who, I'm just presenting it as they would, do you really believe this guy, you've heard testimony after testimony after testimony, how much he loved his son and his wife would shoot his son in the head? Do you really believe that, jurors? That is going to be their case. That's the case. Yeah, jeez. Oh, uh, let's see. What else do we have to uh, chat about before we roll? Oh, nothing. <laughs> yes, actually, tons. We go on all day. Isn't it crazy? Everywhere you go, people are asking you questions and things about it, and you... Because you, you, you watch every minute and see everything, it's sometimes I'm like, okay, what do I want to tell this person in a short conversation? But I also, it's so funny because people ask me all the time what I think, and I don't know if, if you yeah, have the same, absolutely. same conversations with people. Like, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the jury thinks. Yes, yes. I, 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 and we've tried to do this podcast over this since June of 2021 with that kind of temperament, that kind of somewhat evenness of how we are rolling out information and, and articles and whatnot. And I try not to actually give my opinion to people. No, or do you do either. the same? Yeah, I don't, I, I know. Yes, I, I don't. Uh, what I usually say is, this is what the jury's heard. This is not what the jury heard. I'll say something like, you have to remember, you have to try to keep your mind in only what has been amissable. Mm-hmm. Not all the outside noise. And that makes it, but is the jury able to do that? Did any of the jury members go home and watch the Netflix special? <laughs> well, we didn't talk about this with John, which I meant to, was the reaction in the court. We, I, I am sitting in the last row of media, which is like the D-list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting that last row. And so there are people right behind me, and there are oohs and awls and cheers. And at one, finally, after... Many days of this, the judge finally talked to the gallery and said, you know, there should not be any reaction. So they're reacting to what a witness says or what Alex says or something like that. Yeah, and they're almost cheering on the side that they, mostly guilty, you know, they want to say, yay, yeah, good, good job. I get how people think that. Yeah. But it's also a courtroom. It's not a sitcom. So it's a little weird. So like, like, so for instance, Creighton Waters would ask kind of a good question they thought and they'd be going like, yeah. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. That's hard to, to believe that they, they've gotten away with that. Well, we shall see. Uh, we are always grateful and you can reach out to us. Matt Harris podcast at gmail.com Murdoch podcast on Facebook. And we'll talk soon, friend.
At Kroger, we want our fresh produce to meet your expectations, which is why we're dedicated to doing up to a 27-point inspection on our fruits and veggies, checking for things like scarring. In fact, only the best produce, like zesty oranges and crisp carrots, reach our shelves. Because when it comes to fresh, our higher standards mean fresher produce. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Progressive presents Adjusting to the Suburbs. You used to associate crickets with silence. But since you bought a house in the suburbs, you know crickets hate silence. If any other creature realized rubbing its legs together made a piercing high-pitched noise, they might think, maybe I won't do that. Constantly. All night long. Luckily, you can save with Progressive by bundling your home and auto. Now that's something to make noise about. Just not constantly. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliates and third-party insurers.